Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. What's up with you here? I'm Baron. Yeah, this is the second video. I actually found out how to get the numbers here. You just click on those little bars and you get the numbers. So stop moving. Who the hell are you? A zombie worker. And you? Also. Well, let's talk to the zombie worker then. The shambling corpse gazes at you with vacant eyes. Her skin is paper thin, almost wispy. It's like someone draped a sheet of cobwebs across her fame frame. The number 594 has been scratched onto her forehead with a charcoal pencil. So, doing anything later? The corpse continues to stare at you. Psst! <laughs> you see the way she was looking at me? Huh? You see that? The way she was following the curve of my... Uh, Occipital bone? You mean that blank eyed beyond the graves there? What? Are you blind? She was scouting me out. It was shameless the way she wanted me. I think you're imagining things. She's a zombie, a corpse, a dead person. You probably didn't even register to her senses. Yeah, yeah, whatever. When you've been dead as long as I have, you know the signals. They may be too subtle for you to pick up on, but that's why I'll be spending my... That's why... No, no, that's why... Uh, but it should be why, isn't it? But that's why I'll be spending my nights with some luscious, recently dead shit while you're standing around going, Huh? What's going on? Where's my moo moo memories? <laughs> Whatever, Morty, let's go. Oh, Morty. The left side of this woman's face looks as if it was caved in with a club, and her flesh sags in bruised, swollen clumps over her ruined skull. The number 6 to 6 has been stitched onto the corpse's right cheek, just below the eye. Ooh, nasty wound you got there. Uh, the corpse continues to stare at you with its one good eye. Okay, what else do we have? There's another one. This corpse is lumbering along a triangular path. Once it reaches one of the corners of the triangle, it pauses, then turns and staggers towards the next corner. It has 965 tattooed on the side of its skull. As you approach, it halts and stares at you. So, why are you walking in a triangle? The corpse stares at you blankly. What else do we have? There's a door. It can be opened. Uh, blood stains, rust and other remains cover the surface of this metal slab. It is much larger than most of the other slabs and is sitting on a platform that allows it to be rotated. Something to get here? It doesn't look like it. I'm gone. Uh, oh, why is Morty not following? <coughs> Done. I'm gone. What do we have here? Nothing. I'm gone. What is that? Receiving room lockbook. This huge logbook lists mortuary procedures in a tight, crept, crept script. All the shells entering the mortuary are to be delivered to the receiving room and locked with the scribe on duty before being embalmed or cremated. The records are to be checked to determine if the shell is one of the contracted, and if so, do not prepare the shell. Move the shell to one of the preparation rooms, contact the scribe on duty and notify him that the contracted shell is to be raised. To be certain that the shell is thoroughly stripped of his, his possessions before being sent to the preparation rooms. Yeah, be certain that the shell is thoroughly stripped. The contracted workers are intended for simple manual labor and do not have the capacity to search and strip a shell. The faction is not responsible for any possessions lost or items stolen by collectors who have brought the shells to the mortuary. 
the shell's possessions are to be stored in the receiving room until an initiate can be sent to claim them. Please catalog all possessions in the logbook. Following this list is thousands of entries of bodies that have been sent to the receiving room. As you flip through the rest of the book, however, you notice the last page has been cut out. Ah, dang it! That would have been uh, interesting. Who are you? The corpse is shuffling from slab to slab, bandaging the corpse is lying there. And the number 396 is carved into his left temple and his lips are stitched closed. You notice the corpse is carrying a roll of bandages in its hand. The bandages look usable. Uh, try and take the bandages from the zombie. You sneak your hand out and take the roll of bandages from the corpse's hand. <coughs> the corpse doesn't even seem to notice. It continues going through the motions of bandaging the bodies. Examine the corpse again. The corpse is shuffling from slab to slab, bandaging the corpses lying there. It is still carrying on about its duties even without bandages. The number 396 is carved into his left temple and his lips are stitched closed. Sorry about taking your bandages, it's just that I need them more than the bodies here. The corpse continues to stare at you. We leave it in peace then. And we have fist irons and some money. So that apparently is a blunt weapon. 2 to 4 crushing speed 1. This crude iron bar is designed to slip over the fist with the thick portion resting in the palm and the iron ring facing outwards over the knuckles. While wearing these fist irons, a single punch can shatter someone's jaw. Okay, so that's um, 2 to 4 crushing. That's 1 to 3 piercing. So I guess this is better. Pro but, you know, probably against skeletons or something. I don't know. Funny thing about his teeth though, uh, Mortis Bite is uh, <laughs> considered to be a fist weapon, don't ask. <laughs> I like that. Okay, what else do we have here? Who are you? Stop moving and talk to me. The number 1201 has been inked on the forehead of this corpse and the ink has run down its eyes, cheeks and jaw. As you follow the ink, tears down the corpse's face you notice it has run into the stitching sealing the corpse's lips and has caught on what looks like the corner of a note stuck in the corpse's mouth well try and pull the note out the note has been mingled with the ichor in the zombie's mouth if you try to pull the paper out through the cross stitches it would tear the paper to shreds hacking up the corpse to get a look uh, to Hacking up the corpse to get at it looks like it will destroy the note. You'll need to find a delicate way to remove the stitches before removing the notes. Well, I have a scalpel and we use it to cut through the stitches. You get 250 experience. Too bad I can't use the mouse wheel to scroll here. You deftly slice through the stitches sealing the corpse's mouth and the jaw sacks open. You carefully pull the note from the corpse's mouth. Despite the condition of the paper, the writing on it still appears legible. Okay, take a look at the corpse again. Um, its jaw is hanging open and the trail of ichor is tricking from the corner of its mouth. Sorry about the, uh, slicing those stitches, I just had to see what was in your mouth. The corpse's milky white eyes stare at you vacantly. We leave the corpse in peace and take a look at the note. This is the note from Corpse 1201. This is a foul smelling note received from the mouth of one of the mortuary zombies. It looks like it was soon into the corpse's mouth by accident. Despite its condition, the writing is legible. Please, to whatever dustman reads this, I beg of you. I know of my legal obligation under the terms of the dead contract. But I am prepared to offer more than my signing fee if you will cremate my body rather than raising it. I have arranged for this note to be left with my body upon my death. If you are reading this, then please use this note as instructed 
and accept the result in exchange for my contract duty. Let my contract number serve as the key. It looks like the corpse was too late to prevent the raising. Uh, but you notice that beneath the writing is a diagram. It looks like directions for folding the parchment into a strange pattern. The number was 1201. So we use it. This foul smelling note has a strange looking diagram inscribed beneath the writing. It looks as if it's instructing you to fold the corners of the note so their points touch the center. There is a series of strange marks on each corner. One mark in the upper right, two marks in the lower right, three marks in the lower left and no marks in the upper left. So if there is one mark um, on the upper right and it starts with a one, that means we fold the upper right um, into the center. So then comes the two. Um, two marks on the lower right. That means we fold the lower right into the center. Thank you. Then comes the O, the zero. A no mark on the upper left. So you fold the upper left into the center, and then one again. That would be the upper right again. Fold the upper right back into the center. As you fold the upper right corner back to the center, the lower left corner mirrors the action until all the corners touch in the center. You watch for a moment and the corners of the paper rise up, turning the note into a small four-sided paper pyramid. We open the sides of the pyramid and get 250 experience points. You peel back the sides of the pyramid and the paper disintegrates to dust. Inside is a small triangle shaped earring. It catches the light and gleams brightly. You take the earring. Oh, we have to identify that. You receive the small earring from folding a note in the mouth of one of the walking corpses in the mortuary. It's a beautiful earring, but despite its beauty, all it seems to do is remind you how strange this world you've woken up in is. Yeah, we have to identify it. Yeah, I can't do it right now. Could we use it? We could use it. The inventory is, you know, we don't have much space in the inventory, therefore. I'm using that. Did I talk to you yet? The smell of formaldehyde emanating from this corpse is particularly strong. It smells like it was applied recently and with good reason. The corpse appears to be in an advanced stage of decay. Her jaw is missing and some of the flesh has slid off her skull, revealing the number 1072 uh, chiseled into the bone. Uh, I think this one has seen better days. The corpse does not respond to your voice. The fact it has no jaw may some have may some the fact it has no jaw may have something to do with it. Either that or it simply has nothing to say. Farewell. I'm gone. That is empty. There seems to be another door. Alright. What else do we get here? Oh, what's that? A big book. This book is huge. It must contain right. thousands of names. Who's that? Dull. What's that? This gate looks sealed shut. There's no lock or other means of opening it. Talk to me. Hey, I said talk to me and I really meant it. Fuck it. This walking corpse has the number uh, 1094 carved into its forehead. Its mouth has been soon tightly shut and the chemical reek of fresh formaldehyde hangs in an overpowering cloud around it. Despite the pallid, sunken features and lifeless milky eyes, it is clear that this was once a handsome young man. So, seen anything interesting going on? The corpse continues to stare at you. I'm 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 doing my best to talk to all the corpses and I get no reaction. This is a shame. What? What did it say? This corpse has been completely wrapped in bandage like a mummy. All right. Um, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. That too. Did we talk to you? 
This female corpse is making the rounds from slab to slab in the room. Her hair is knotted into a long braid and looped around her neck like a noose. Someone has stencil number 1096 onto her forehead and her lips have been stitched closed. Uh, nice braid. The corpse does not respond. You doubt it even knows you're there. Okay, let's talk to this guy. Doll, let's save. Just in case I do something stupid here. Alright. The scribe looks very old. His skin is wrinkled and has a slight trace of yellow, like old parchment. Charcoal grey eyes lie within an angular face and a large white beard flows down the front of his robes, like a waterfall. His breathing is wrecked and irregular, but even his occasional coughing does not slow the scratching of his quill pen. Greetings! War Chief, what are you doing? Uh, I was going to speak with this scribe. You might know something about how I got here. Look, rattling your bone box with dusty should be the last thing. Before Morty can finish his round, the scribe begins coughing violently. After a moment or two, the coughing spell dies down and the scribe's breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. And we especially shouldn't be swapping the chant with sick dusties. Come on, let's leave. The quicker we give this place the love, the better. Before Marty can finish, the scribe's grey eyes flicker to you. The weight of years hangs heavy upon me, restless one. He places down his quill. But I do not yet count deafness among my ailments. Restless one, do you know me? Know you? I? There is a trace of bitterness in the scribe's voice as he speaks. I have never known you, restless one. No more than you know have known yourself. He is silent for a moment. For you have forgotten, have you not? Who are you? As always the question. And the wrong question as always. He bows slightly, but the movement suddenly sends him into a bout of coughing. I he pauses for a moment, catches his breath. I am dull. Perhaps you can answer some questions for me, doll. Updated my journal. Very well. What do you wish to know? Do you know who I am? Updated my journal. I know scant little of you, restless one. I know little more of those that have journeyed with you and who now lie in our keeping. Doll sighs. I ask that you no longer ask others to join with you, restless one. Where you walk, so walks misery. Let your burden be your own. There are others who have journeyed with me, and they are here? Updated my journal. Do you not know the woman's corpse interred in the memorial hall below? I had thought that she had traveled with you in the past. Dahl looks like he's about to start coughing again, then catches his breath. Am I mistaken? Where is her body? The Northwest Memorial Hall on the floor below us. Check the beers there. Her name should be on one of the memorial plaques. Mayhap that will revive your memory. Mm, I don't know. I don't recall ever traveling with a woman. Dahl makes no response to this. He simply stares at you in silent. silence. Oh, I already had that. You said there were others. Who else is here? Doubtless there are, but I know not their names, nor where they lie. One such as you has left a path many have walked, and few have survived. Dull gestures around you. All dead come here. Some must have traveled with you once. I find no fault with your reasoning. I had some other questions. What is this place? You are on the mortuary, restless one. Again you have come. Before he can finish, Dahl breaks into a fit of coughing. After a moment he calms himself and his breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. This is the waiting room for those about to depart the shadow of this life. Tell me about the mortuary. Oh no, click for more. Okay. This is where the dead are brought to be interred or cremated. It is our responsibility as dustmen to care for the dead, those who have left this shadow of life and walk the path of true death. Dahl's voice drops in concern. Your wounds must have exacted a heavy toll if you do not recognize this place. It is almost your home. Shadow of life? 
Yes, Shadow, you see, Restless Want is life. It is not real. Your life, my life, they are shadows, flickerings of what life once was. This life is where we end up after we die. And here we remain, trapped, caged, until we can achieve the true death. True death? True death is non-existence. A state devoid of reason, of sensation, of passion. Dull coughs, then gives a ragged breath. A state of purity. Sounds like oblivion. Why would anyone want that? It is worse than remain. Is it worse than remaining in the shadow of what life once was? I think not. Tell me more about the mortuary. We already had that. Uh, true death. Okay, we already had that too. Um, dustman. We dustmen are a faction, a gathering of those of us that recognize the illusion of this life. We await the next life and help others on their journey. Perhaps you can explain why the dustmen want me dead. Dull sighs. It is said there are souls who can never attain the true death. Death has forsaken them and their names shall never be penned in the dead book. To awake from death as you have done suggests you are one of these souls. Your existence is unacceptable to our faction. Unacceptable? That does not sound like it leaves me in a good position. You must understand, your existence is a blasphemy to them. Many of our faction would order you cremated if they were aware of your affliction. You're a dustman, but you don't seem to be in favor of killing me. Why not? Because forcing our beliefs upon you is not just. You must give up this shadow of life on your own, not because we force you to do so. Thor looks about to break into another coughing jack, but he manages to hold it in with some effort. As long as I remain at my post, I will protect your right to search for your own truth. What is your post? I am a scribe, a cataloger of the shells that come to the mortuary. Thor coughs again, then takes a deep breath. As long as the stream of corpses flows through the mortuary, I shall remain at my post. You say that I have been here more than once. How is it that the dustmen do not recognize me? Updated my journal. I am the one that catalogues the shells that come to our halls, restless one. Dahl breaks into a fit of coughing and steadies himself. Only I see the faces of those that lie upon our slabs. The dark of your existence lies safe with me. So, let's talk about Sigil. Sigil is our failed city, restless one. Ah, that was a short one. Wounds? Yes, the wounds that decorate your body. They look as if they would have sent a lesser man along the path of the true death. Yet it seems as if many of them have healed already. Thor coughs violently for a moment and steadies himself. But those are only the surface wounds. Only surface wounds? What do you mean? Updated my journal. I speak of the wounds of your mind. You have forgotten much, have you not? Mayhap your true wounds run much deeper than the scars that decorate your surface. Dark coughs again. But that is something that only you would know for certain. How did I get here? Dahl snorts in contempt as he finds the memory repugnant. Your moldy chariot, fa your moldy chariot ferried you to the mortuary last this morning. You would think you were royally based on the number of loyal subjects that lay stinking and festering upon the cart that carried you. I arrived here on a cart? Updated my journal. Yes, your body was somewhere in the middle of the heap, sharing its fluids with the rest of the mountain of corpses. Dahl breaks into another violent fit of coughing, finally catching his breath minutes later. Your seneschal, Farad was as always pleased to accept a few more decoppers to dump the lot of you at the mortuary gate. Who is this ferret? He is a collector of the dead. Dahl draws a ragged breath, then continues. We have such people in our city that scavenge the bodies of those that have walked the path of true death and bring them to us so that they may be interred properly. Where can I find this ferret? 
if events persist as they have restless ones you have a much greater chance of ferret finding you and bringing you to us again before you find whatever ooze puddle he wallows in this time nevertheless i must find him a slight warning creeps in the doll's tongue do not seek out farrod restless one i am certain that it will simply come full circle again with you none the wiser and farrod a few coppers richer except death restless one do not perpetuate your cycle of misery. I have to find him. Do you know where he is? Updated my journal. Dahl is silent for a moment. When he finally speaks, he seems to do so reluctantly. I do not know under which gutter stood Farrod lairs at the moment. But I imagine that he can be found somewhere beyond the mortuary gates and the hive. Perhaps someone there will know where you can find him. Doesn't sound like you like Farrod much. There are some I respect, Restless One. Dahl takes a ragged breath and steadies himself. Farrod is not one of them. He wears his ill repute like a badge of honor and takes liberties with the possessions of the dead. He is a knight of the post, cross-trading filth of the lowest sort. Knight of the post? A knight of the post, Dahl coughs, a thief. All Farrod brings to our walls comes stripped of a little less... Uh, of their dignity than they possessed in life. Pharaoh takes whatever he may pry from their stiffening fingers. Hmm, did this Pharaoh ta take anything away from me? Dahl pauses, considering. Most likely. Are you missing anything? Especially anything of value? Voice dips as he frowns. Not that Pharaoh would take exception to anything that wasn't physically grafted to your body. Sometimes even that's not enough to give his greedy mind pause. I am missing a journal. A journal? If it was of any value, then it's likely it lies in Ferret's hands. Okay. What else do we have? How did I get here? No, we already had that. Hmm. Can you tell me how to get out of here? Hmm, the front gate is the most obvious exit, but they will not let anyone other than Dustman pass. Dahl breaks into a ragged cough, then continues. One of the guides by the front gate has a key to it, but it is unlikely he will open it for you unless you are extremely persuasive. I see. Um, what do you do here? Ah, oh, we already had that. Well, you sound ill, are you not well? I am close now to the true death, restless one. It will not be long before I pass beyond the eternal boundary and find the peace I have been seeking. I tire of this mortal sphere. Tall gives a ragged sigh. The plains hold no more wonders for one such as I. The eternal boundary? The boundary between the shadow of this life and the true death. We already had that. Uh, are you certain there might be some way I could help you? I do not wish to live forever, nor live again, restless one. I could not bear it. So be it. Farewell, doll. As you turn to leave, doll speaks. Know this. I do not envy you, restless one. To be reborn as you would be a curse that I could not bear. You must come to terms with it. At some point, your path will return you here. Dark coughs, the sound rattling in his throat. It is the way of all things, flesh and bone. Then perhaps we will meet again, Dahl. So, something should have happened to our journal. Oh, we have apparently lots of things here. What is new? I met a sickly scribe named Dahl in the mortuary. He knew I had forgotten myself before I even spoke to him. Did I know him before I lost my memories? I was hoping to get some answers, but this place seems to breed more than more and more questions. I asked Dahl if he knew me, and he responded that he knew little about me, and even less about the companions that had traveled with me in the past. Apparently their bodies lie in the mortuary. <coughs> Perhaps seeing them will cause my memories to resurface. Dahl told me that one of the women who journeyed with me is interred in the, mo mem in the memorial hall on the first floor of the mortuary. 
Dahl told me that he is the one responsible for keeping my return visits to the mortuary a secret from the rest of the dustmen. Since he is the scribe in the recovering room, he is the one. He is one of the only ones who see my body when it arrives. Dahl suggested that the wounds I have suffered are minor in comparison to the wounds in my mind. He even went so far as to suggest that the wounds I have suffered may be responsible for my loss of memory and the mental damage may be much greater than amnesia. The thought makes me uneasy. I wouldn't mind hearing some good news every once in a while. Apparently Farrow delivered my body here in a cart along with a heap of other corpses. Was I actually dead when he did this? Dahl told me that Farrow can be found beyond the mortuary in some place called the Hive. He didn't seem to want me to go hunting for Farrow, but then again he is not the one who lost his memories and woken up from the dead so he can keep his opinions to himself. Dahl suggests I ask someone of the, some of the people in the Hive where I can find Farrow. No new monsters? Oh, we have Dahl. Interesting. Well, he has quite a beard. This elderly scribe looks very old. His skin is wrinkled and has a slight trace of yellow like old parchment. That charcoal gray eyes lie within an angular face, a non-human face, as the ears narrow to points. A large white beard flows down the front of his black robes like a waterfall. He coughs occasionally. The book he works in front of is huge and seems to contain many names. And we have male and female zombies. And no new player characters. Um, nothing changed with the quests. Okay, so well, we did get really far, didn't we? I'm gone. So we will form up here and call it a video. This time we override you. So thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.